hey guys nelly here welcome back to my channel if you're new here i am a software artist on a journey to learn grow and improve my art skills a while back i posted some color studies on instagram and a friend of mine courageously admitted that she has no idea how to go about creating color studies herself i instantly remembered when i first started off as a beginner the feeling of opening a canvas and thinking what next as artists we are constantly told to do studies over and over again and only very few times are we told an understandable process to do those studies color studies are especially difficult for beginners because of the overwhelming amount of colors to choose from and the fact that you literally have to train your eyes to see color when i started off there weren't many helpful videos at all and even though i had a bit of knowledge in color theory i still found it difficult to train my eyes to see color fast forward today and i will say i'm not the best color expert but i have picked up a few tricks that i use while painting my color studies and help me train my inner color picker Just a heads up, in this video I won't be teaching color theory and I do recommend that you have some understanding of color theory and how light interacts with color before watching this video. To help you with that, I will be linking some very helpful resources in the descriptions so you can sharpen your knowledge before moving on to these steps. To name a few, Marco Busi has a bunch of extremely helpful videos that's basically all I watched in the beginning of my color journey and it's amazing how it's all available on YouTube for free. And if you want to further your knowledge a bit more, then I also suggest you get Color and Light by James Gurney. It's literally one of my art bibles. I mainly work digital but this video is generally teaching how to train your eyes to see color so it can be helpful for any artist regardless of their medium of choice. Finally, a huge disclaimer that I am not some master of color. These are all things I picked up while doing my own personal studies that helped me along the way. I'm no means saying that this is the only and all right way to do this. I'm just sharing this in case it could be helpful for someone out there. In order to train your eyes to see color, you need to understand a few basic things. Like I said, in this video, we're not going to dive deep into all the terms, so you should already be acquainted with some of them. We're going to mainly focus on these three terms. The first being value, which basically means how light or dark the color is. Saturation, which means how pure the color is in comparison to gray. And lastly, hue, which is just another name for color. I also want to briefly say some really important things you should know about color. Number one, color is relative, which simply put means that color does not exist as static cues, but changes based on its surroundings. And number two being what our eyes perceive as color is actually two things working hand in hand, which are the local color of the object and light. This is why in order to fully understand color, you should also understand how light works in relation to it. Again, Marco Bussi and James Gurney are both amazing at explaining this. I'm just showing you a neat trick that you can use and can help you train your eyes to see, understand and choose colors better. When I started doing color studies, one of my main issues was not knowing where to start. I would look at the reference and all I would see was color everywhere that my mind didn't know how to take it all in. So, you know what I did? I brought my good friend the color picker. I'm just going to say this now. When you're doing color studies, you should stray away from using the color picker. The goal of doing studies isn't to create a masterful replica of your reference. It's to train your eyes to become better at painting and picking the right colors. This is why you should save the color picker only to cross check your colors or as a last resort for those pesky colors you can't seem to get right. But now the main question is, if we can't use the color picker, how do we know what colors to choose? The first thing you should do before jumping into making any strokes is to observe your reference. Ask yourself, what's the local color of each object? What type of lighting situation is this? It's very important because, like I said, color and light work hand in hand. Now I'm going to share a handy formula I always use to try and get a similar color close to my reference. Value to hue to saturation or value to saturation to hue, depending on the situation. This is basically the formula I use to train my eye to see color. I'm sure you might be confused because that isn't even a real formula. So let me explain with an example. Let's take this block of color. The first thing I do is to think of the value. I try to group my value into three groups, lights, mediums, and dark values, or in other words, whites, gray, and blacks. When I squint, I ask myself, what value is closer to the sample? In this case, I think it's a light value. If you're a returning subscriber, then you probably know how much I love breaking things down. 
I do this here by breaking the light value into three more values. The lightest value, the mid light value, and the light value closer to the mid tones. Then I try to fit the value in one of them. Hope that's not too confusing. So I would say this value is a light value closer to the mid-tones. Now the next step is a bit tricky. Sometimes it's easier to determine the hue first and other times the saturation. I tend to go back and forth between them because each color situation is different. But for an example as simple as this, I'll go with hue first. When it comes to hue, I try to think of the color closest to what I'm seeing. Using my knowledge of color theory, I know this color most likely lies within the warm green spectrum. It's fine if you don't get it on the first try because you can always adjust it. Now, I ask myself, how saturated is this color? I group my saturation into burly saturated, mildly saturated, and saturated. And just like I did with the values, I try to place the saturation into one of them and adjust this as I see fit. For this color, I felt it leaned towards the mildly saturated group. It's normal not to get the color you want right off the bat, so you have to keep adjusting until you get it just right. The more you do this, the easier it becomes and the less you have to adjust. But remember, you don't have to get the exact color to match your reference. It just has to be close enough to seem similar. Try doing a whole page of these as practice and just to encourage you, I made a mini worksheet that you can download and begin practicing right away. Now you're probably thinking, how do you apply that to an actual study? Well, I'm here to tell you that it's basically the same. The only difference is you have to consider a few more things, mainly local color and light. To tell you a secret, in my defense, adding those makes the whole process a lot easier, especially if you already have some knowledge in color and light. So let me show you a walkthrough of how I would go about doing a simple color study using this reference. The first thing I do is to make some observation notes. I ask myself, what is the local color of all the objects and what sort of lighting condition is it? This one, I noticed it was a direct light coming from the top left and I also noticed that the light is warm tone, really close to the yellows. This automatically means that any color in the light are going to lean towards a warm yellowish tone. After taking my time to observe, I jump right into it. Sometimes I start with a mini value study, depending on how complicated the reference is to give me a clear understanding of the values but this reference is relatively simple for me so i'm just going to jump into it if you're new to this i would highly recommend you make a mini value study first as i begin i'm making sure to paint in the background before focusing on other objects this is because color interacts with its environment more than you think here's one of my very first color studies i know it's horrible i got the colors totally wrong and i know you can't see it now but wait until i paint in a background now I'm sure you can see the colors are clearly off. This is because I painted this without considering the background in relation to my reference. So be mindful of that. After the background, I do a quick rough blocking to get the general proportions of all the objects in my reference. After the rough block out, it's time to use my trusty formula and all the notes I made while observing the reference at the start. I began painting the pier and to get the color of the light values, I first determined what group of light is my lightest value on my pier and I move the slider to match just that. Now I know the local color of my pier lies somewhere in the greens and since I already know from my observation earlier that the light is warm toned so I have to push the green to a warm yellow green hue. At this point it's easy to know that the saturation is mildly saturated. I say easy because not only did I observe this but part of my brain already knows that when a cool color is shifted by warm light saturation is lost. But that is more technical and that's why a good knowledge of color and light is highly recommended to get better at doing color studies. Again, all the resources are linked down below. I do the exact same thing while painting my midtones and shadows. And my knowledge of color theory helps me know that shadows are a lot more saturated and lean closer to the color of the surroundings and light rather than the local color. So I shift my shadows totally to a more yellow hue. Next, I start blending and add slight color shifts to add variation. When doing this, just make sure that your values are fixed and try to stay in the same hue and temperature family. Well, unless you're going for something a lot more vibrant. But for studies, I recommend you try to stick to your reference. Now it's time to paint the jug and this is a perfect example where I use value to saturation to hue. 
The jug's local value is pretty light in general, so I move my slider to the light value. From past studies, I personally noticed that using view first while painting neutral colors is a bit difficult for me, so I start out with saturation. And in this case, I feel it's barely saturated, but leans slightly towards the mildly saturated. Now, with my knowledge of the light source, I know the jug is totally going to lean towards the warm tones, mainly yellow-orange. This is because the local color of the object is neutral, so the color of the light is totally going to draw the hue towards it. At this point, if you still don't believe me when I say it's super helpful to understand color and how it relates to light, I hope this has changed your mind. Just like before, I do the exact same thing for the shadows and I just paint away. I keep repeating this method and as I paint, I'm thinking of shapes, brushworks and all that fun stuff. But most importantly, I'm having fun, observing and trying to learn from the experience. While painting, I added a value layer by making a layer on top of everything, setting it to color and filling it with black. And as I paint, I switch the layer on and off to see my values and make sure it's still correct and intact. The rest of the process is very intuitive. I just keep painting until I'm done and I can finally look at the painting as a whole and see if I need to make any color adjustments. But remember, this is just a study. Try not to focus too much on getting it to a perfect state. Focus more on the colors and larger shapes than details. And finally, after about 90 minutes to paint, I was done with this study. Color really isn't that hard and as long as you open your mind to understand the concepts behind how color and light works then I'm very sure you'll be able to create a study like this yourself even if you've never done this before. I mean, I started off there as well. And after you do a bunch of these, your knowledge will increase and then you can move on to painting portraits and other things. The main thing you get from this is the experience that you have while training your eyes to see color. And with that experience, you end up knowing the right colors to pick in other situations, even when you're doing something from imagination. So if you've never done color studies before, I hope this video has given you a good example and a good process so you can finally get out of that shell and get to it because it will really help you and improve your skills as an artist by far thank you so much for watching this video i hope it was informative and i hope it helped at least one person out there to pick up a stylus and get to painting thanks again and i'll see you in the next one